What's up guys, Van here from McMurphy Farms and today we're talking about the biggest weapon we as humans use to kill our aquarium livestock. And obviously we are doing this accidentally, but understanding ammonia can save a lot of aquarium animals. So let's start by defining the symbol for ammonia in our tank, which is NH3, and for its friendlier counterpart ammonium, it's NH4. Ammonia smells like sweat and cat urine only 100 times sharper. If you have ever smelt it, you'll know. It hits you in your nose with a vicious burning sensation, and trust me, you don't want to be in the same room as open ammonia. So I want you to picture yourself locked in a bathroom with no windows and with the bathtub full of very, very toxic and dangerous chemicals. You won't be able to breathe and sometimes you won't even be able to see properly. That's why it's important to understand ammonia and the effect it can have on our livestock. Remember that our livestock have nowhere else to go and are confined in the tank that you put them in. They can't open the window and they rely on the ecosystem that you need to create for them. So how does ammonia end up in our fish tanks? Well the most common way is via fish poop. The fish poop drifts to the bottom of the aquarium and starts decaying which then produces ammonia. The exact same thing happens to uneven eaten food. Another way ammonia can end up in our aquariums is via dead fish. Obviously when a fish or shrimp is dead, you need to take it out otherwise it might result in more deaths due to an ammonia spike. So how can we see ammonia? That's the thing, you can't. But there are sure signs of ammonia being present in your water. For an example, fish gasping at the top of your tank means that they don't like the water they are in and it's probably ammonia. You might even find fish that are already dead in your aquarium and that could also be a result of ammonia poisoning. Sometimes you can even smell the ammonia coming from the top of the water. But the sure way to tell is to test it with a test kit that you buy at your local pet store. Now the golden question is how can we reduce the ammonia? The first thing you can do is you can do a water change. How much water you change depends on what livestock you keep so it will be very irresponsible for me to say exactly how much you can do. But if I realize I have a problem with ammonia I do a 50% water change without even thinking about it because in my personal experience ammonia is a lot worse than the water that comes directly from your tap but that will depend on where you live the second way you can reduce ammonia is by using a filter we all have or need one in an established filter we get beneficial bacteria that grows in the filter media and absorbs waste from the water we need this in every tank you see the beneficial bacteria breaks down the ammonia into nitrite so we might have a nitrite spike and then the bacteria can turn the nitrite into nitrates and when we do water changes, we gradually remove the nitrates over time. The third way we can reduce the probability of ammonia is with plants and algae. Plants and algae uses ammonium and sometimes nitrates for growth. Next to a filter and regular water changes, plants and algae are very important in our aquarium's natural ecosystem. I always try to promote keeping live plants because of all the benefits. Just a tip, if your plants are not doing great, it might be your light. Check out my series on DIY light, or it might be that you're just over filtering your aquarium and the plants don't have enough ammonium to break down in order to grow. Chemicals that are fish safe like Amcor Plus and Amalok can also be used. There are a lot of others on the market, just remember to do your water changes before you add any chemicals so that it does not have to work as hard. So as you might know, I'm not a big fan of adding any chemicals to the water, but if it's life and death, I would definitely consider it. And the last way you can reduce ammonia is by feeding less. I cannot stress this enough. Like I said earlier, uneaten food falls to the bottom and starts to decay. This will cause an ammonia spike. So if you see uneaten food, take it out. You can also reduce the portions of food that you feed your fish because they can easily go a couple of days or even a week without food and that will help until the ammonia is gone. If you want to be more safe and make sure uneaten food gets eaten and starts being broken down, you can add snails to your aquarium. If you're not sure what snails to get, check out these videos in the top right corner of your screen. But most people however hate snails. I feel that snails advantages outweigh their disadvantages by far and you can really consider keeping them. Before I close this video, I want to get a bit more technical and explain how the pH can affect your ammonia's toxicity levels. Okay, so we know that the waste that is produced causes ammonia. The ammonia then quickly finds a proton and becomes the friendlier counterpart of ammonia which is ammonium. Because of this, a ratio is born between the two. The pH of the aquarium determines this ratio. So the smart guys with the glasses has determined that ammonium has an acid association constant of 9.25. Now all that this means is that there's a ratio of 1 to 1 between ammonia and ammonium if the pH is 9.25 in your tank. So for every part ammonia, there will be one part ammonium. Now this is the interesting part, because if your pH changes, this ratio will also change. But how will this change? If your pH decreases one unit, the ratio will change tenfold. If the pH decreases another unit, the ratio will change again tenfold. 
The best part about these two forms of nitrogen is that they live in permanent equilibrium of one another. Let's look at how this equilibrium affects things in your aquarium. If we stick to the pH of 7.25 and we have 4 ammonia molecules, we will have 400 ammonia molecules. If your plant uses 100 molecules of the ammonium, this will force one ammonia molecule to protonate while keeping the 1 to 1 ratio, thus reducing the ammonia levels and in turn making your aquarium less toxic. So it sucks to admit it, but I should have paid more attention in chemistry classes. Ok guys, now for your 3 random tips. Here's your first tip, it's 5 bucks so use it wisely. Tip number 2. If you're in school, maybe start listening in chemistry class. As it turns out, it can actually help you. And tip number 3. Since you are listening in chemistry class, maybe we can all start listening to our mothers. But that's it for this video guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, press that like button and check out our other videos. I hope you guys learned something today and as always, keep it shrimple.